You want to know what's really in Pfizer's RNA vaccine? Let's look at the ingredients. Remember that these RNA vaccines have two parts. The RNA that's actually going to code for the spike protein, and then a lipid nanoparticle, like little fatty bubble around them that's going to help them get into your cells. First thing in here is the RNA itself called BNT162B2, but that's just the RNA. Next up, we can look at the list of excipients. This is all the other stuff besides that RNA. First, we've got ALC0315, ALC0159, and this long phosphocholine, which are basically all just lipids and are likely going to be part of that lipid nanoparticle bubble. Same thing with cholesterol, which you've probably heard of. It's an important part of many of your cell membranes and can be found in foods like meat and dairy. Then we've got potassium chloride, potassium dihydrogen phosphate, sodium chloride, and disodium hydrogen phosphate dihydrate, and these are all just salts. And then finally, sucrose, just sugar. And that's it. Data source in the comments. RNA vaccines are not going to change your DNA. RNA vaccines work by introducing into your cells a small piece of RNA that codes for a protein found on the COVID-19 virus, a spike protein on the outside of it. Your cells then use that RNA to create just the spike protein, and then your body creates an immune response to it. Whole video in more detail on YouTube. And that RNA is turned into protein in the cytoplasm of your cell. It does not need to go into the nucleus where your DNA is. And that RNA will break down over time, so it's not going to just stick around in your cells forever either. The FDA has started to release its analysis of Pfizer and BioNTech's COVID-19 RNA vaccine trial data. And this graph is really encouraging. This trial looked at about 44,000 people, about half of whom received a placebo and half of whom received the vaccine. This graph is looking at COVID-19 cases that happened in that trial. I know it's small here on TikTok, but the x-axis here is time after first dose of vaccination, and the y-axis is accumulation of COVID-19 cases. Each dot or square on the graph is a new case. Blue are people who received the vaccine, and red are people who received the placebo. And so over time, you can see that cases accumulated so much faster in the placebo group than in the vaccine group. This is a really encouraging graph of vaccine efficacy. My thesis was focused on RNA silencing and sequencing. So I do have a lot of experience thinking pretty deeply about RNA and how it works. What happens in your cells when you get infected by a virus? A very general overview. So viruses have two parts, a genome made of RNA or DNA, and some kind of shell or capsid or envelope surrounding it. But viruses can't reproduce and make more viruses on their own. They need to infect a host cell first. Once inside the cell, the virus releases its genome of DNA or RNA inside and uses the cell's own replication machinery to make more copies of both the genome and the other proteins it needs to build its shell. Then, the parts are assembled into new viruses, which can leave the cell and go out to infect other cells. 